Hey everyone, I've tried to upload this video several times, but uh, YouTube kept uh, taking it down. Uh, Universal is really aggressive with the clips of the movie being online. Apologies, but there won't be any footage of the movie in this video, just clips of the trailer. Alright, let's try this one more time. Let's review Cocaine Bear. The world is filled to the brim with mediocre and bad movies that are absolutely uh, no fun to watch. They're boring, slow and meandering, they lack production values, good stories and good characters. In a sense, if you're gonna go ahead and watch one of these movies, better to be half asleep on the couch because the only thing they're good at is laundering money. So with that in mind, I was a bit skeptical about watching Cocaine Bear. I thought that there was no way a movie with a title and a concept like that would be any good or even average for that matter. However, that immediately changed after watching that first scene on the plane. After that, I was 100% certain I was gonna have a great time watching the movie, simply because Cocaine Bear has no illusion about what kind of film it is. It's a bear on cocaine, a big, bushy, 500 pounds, high as a kite, angry as hell bear, and it doesn't care if it's gonna eat two innocent children or a couple in love. Cocaine bear will eat the crap out of everything because it's a bear on cocaine and the dumb thing is angry as hell. Now this simple concept is elevated by the sheer amount of talent in front and behind the camera. You have half the cast of the Americans with Kerry Russell, Marco Martindale and the guy that played Solo. Damn, I had almost forgotten that that movie even existed. I guess the actor is out of movie prison. And behind the camera is Elizabeth Banks, once an extremely lovable comedy actress, now turned comedy director. When you have a simple story like Cocaine Bear, the best thing you can do is pack your movie with as much talent and production values as possible. And that's what really separates Cocaine Bear from third grade productions by, I don't know, Alligator Meth or Fentanyl Raccoon. Oh, I do expect Hollywood to give us some of these movies. Fentanyl Raccoon, I'm gunning for you. Somewhere between Snakes on a Plane with the great Samuel L. Jackson and Cocaine Bear, movies lost their way. Too many franchises, too many sure bets. Cocaine Bear proves that a simple concept can yield both creative and commercial success. With a movie like this, there's little risk involved, as long as the execution is on point. When you have that much talent with great actors and a good production team, then it's no wonder that a movie that cost about $30 million has already made almost three times as much. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens in the movie. Aboard a small plane, a thief has stolen an ungodly amount of cocaine. His plan is to take the drugs with him as he jumps away to safety before the authorities catch up to him. Alas, that doesn't happen. He's so cocked up that he bangs his head and falls to his death. For a first scene of a comedy, this is pure gold. You have an unrecognizable Matthew Rhys as the coked up thief, throwing bags of cocaine out of the window with 80s metal music in full blast. The bags of cocaine land in a nature preserve and a bear eats the hell out of them, going crazy and attacking a couple in love, killing the wife. The teaser sets the mood for the whole film. You know you're gonna watch a gory, balls to the walls horror comedy where silliness and violence make a perfect match. Especially if you think about that the husband of the couple in love is played by Christopher Hivyu, who played Tormund in Game of Thrones. We met him as the savage tough warrior, but here in this movie he plays a nerdy, 80s looking hippie. Christopher Hivyu always had a talent for comedy and it's on full display here. The stolen cocaine belongs to a ruthless gangster called Sid, played of course by Ray Liotta, who else? Sid orders his son, Eddie, and one of his enforcers, David, to the nature preserve to get his cocaine back. Eddie and David are a great pair, with Eddie being a depressed ex-junkie, and David an enforcer who babysits him. Several characters get involved with the cocaine bear, a police detective who investigates the case, a hot mom who's looking for her daughter Didi, and a ranger of the nature preserve. All these characters have great chemistry between them, the filmmakers have made sure to give each of them something special so their time on screen is interesting enough until the cocaine bear comes along and wreaks havoc on their lives. The ranger of the nature preserve wants to seduce the much younger wildlife specialist that she hangs out with putting on lipstick and perfume but he's completely clueless and instead is focused only on the animals. The kids who go missing are really likable characters, they're adventurers who banter and tease each other trying to act much older than they are. Their whole childish adventure stick reminded me of the 1985 movie The Goonies. 
Didi and Henry bring an infectious warmth and enthusiasm to the film scenes that is sure to make you laugh, especially when they stumble upon the cocaine and instead of calling the police, they brainstorm ways to turn a profit. The kid who plays Henry has some really good comedic timing. Lots of the fun lines in the movie come from him, and he always puts a good twist on them. When the gangsters arrive at the nature preserve, they stumble upon a teenage gang, and after David kicks the crap out of them, they discover a brick of cocaine on them. Now they know they're on the right track. With the help of one of the teenagers, they go on searching for the rest of the cocaine. The hot mom, played of course by Kerry Russell, enlists the help of the ranger and her friends so they can help her find Didi. After that crazy opening, the movie has a mellow, relaxing rhythm, jumping from one set of characters to the next. Then the bear attacks and all hell breaks loose. The wildlife specialist stumbles upon an open package of cocaine and thus attracts the attention of the bear. Why, you might ask? Well, because it's the cocaine bear, that's its thing. The bear almost gets Henry, that is hiding atop a tree, but when the cocked up fairy animal smells the cocaine on the wildlife specialist, it goes crazy and in a cartoonish kind of way it climbs the tree and devours him. The hot moment Henry ran away and the movie jumps to the ranger who's hiding inside the cabin injured from the bear. The ranger is an interesting character. She sees herself as way more important than she actually is. She gets trapped in the cabin alongside the two remaining local gang members and when the bear comes knocking, she accidentally shoots one of the teens in the head. You know, I was used to watching Margot Martindale in great dramatic roles like the matriarch gang boss in season 3 on Justified or the Russian spy chief in The Americans that I wasn't aware of her comedic talent and she does have plenty of it, her timing, how she delivers her lines, all of it is really good, especially her physical comedy. I mean, look how awkwardly she's holding the gun. I doubt it's even possible to aim like that. Cocaine Bear is basically a horror comedy, but it's nimble enough that it can also be considered a parody. The Cocaine Bear wants to get into the cabin and eat everyone inside. And that's pretty much the same thing that happens in every horror movie where the monster wants to get the main characters. Here the film has enough awareness to turn the violence way up and let the grisly comedy run wild. Let's stay in this scene in the cabin for a moment. If this was a movie with a killer on the loose, you would expect that the bad guy will just put his hand through the little window and try to grab the local gang member. But because it's a bear, the thought doesn't really cross your mind that an animal would do something like that. And when the bear does put its paw through the window, well, it's just hilarious and it really works. Moments later, two paramedics come by to check out if anyone is injured. They find the ranger hurt behind the counter, trying to warn them that there is a killer bear high on cocaine on the loose. Now, that's a sentence you don't hear too often. The bear attacks, causing havoc inside the small space of the cabin. Beth, the female paramedic, helps the ranger into the ambulance, and eventually they all manage to escape. Well, for a while at least. This is a horror comedy film, People need to be mauled and die for our entertainment after all. While 80s the best mode playing I just can't get enough, the cocaine bear puts pedal on the metal, jumping into the running ambulance, eating anything it can get its hoofs on. The ranger, still tied on the stretcher, slides out of the open door and basically becomes mince meat. The overblown grizzly comedy is one of the key features of the movie. The best part of Cocaine Bear is when it leans into the whole corn syrup, crazy violence thing and lets side characters die just for our pleasure. Eddie, David and the local teenager bond over childhood trauma while they're searching for the missing cocaine. I like these little moments when the film finds its balance between comedy and drama. Normally you would expect Eddie being a gangster to terrorize the local gang kid for more information but instead the teenager lends Eddie some much needed emotional support and ends up giving him advice on how to buy a pet lizard for his son. I really respect comedies that try to have something funny going on in almost every scene, especially if they manage to land the humor. Even in short little moments, like when the police detective plays with a squeaky dog toy in his car, or a bit later on when he's atop the gazebo and the characters don't behave like criminals and start shooting, but instead offer to help him down, like they're his neighbors or something. Here we find ourselves in a kind of Mexican standoff, on a gazebo. No side wants to back down until the cocaine bear comes knocking, 
but instead of attacking and killing everyone, it ingests an ungodly amount of cocaine and faints atop Eddie. This sequence is definitely the best and funniest part of the movie, but alas, I can't show you any footage of it. Feel free to send your complaints to YouTube. The gangster's boss Sid arrives on the scene and shoots the police detective so he can get his drugs back. The movie does get a bit convoluted here, with the partner of the police detective ending up working with the gangsters. That wasn't really necessary, but more than likely it was done because the movie barely has enough plot to fill its 90 minute running time and they needed something to fill the rest of the plot. The hot mom, alongside Henry, finds her daughter Didi hiding in the cave where the bear is living, next to a couple of baby bears who are drenched in cocaine. The gangsters are not too happy that most of their cocaine has been gobbled up by the bear family, so the film culminates at the edge of the waterfall. There, Sid tries to grab the last remaining bag of the cocaine, but the bear comes visiting and he ends up getting killed. The last remaining characters jump into the river and the hot mom ends up tending to David, and that's basically the plot of the film. It could have ended a bit better, I wouldn't call it exactly a happy ending, it didn't even reveal to us what happened to the injured police detective, and it just left us to speculate that he probably died off screen from his wounds. Overall, what sets Cocaine Bear apart from other horror comedies is its heart. Amidst all the mayhem and madness, there are moments of genuine emotion and connection between the characters. The film manages to balance its humor and horror with a surprising amount of heart, making for a truly satisfying viewing experience. Cocaine Bear isn't a masterpiece or even a great film, not even close, but it is pretty good at entertaining its audience. And for a film called Cocaine Bear, that's more than enough.